Welcome to Nova's Here. My name is Greg Horn. We recently celebrated Memorial Day. And, you know, it's a time to remember those that we love, especially our military heroes, all the men and women that have sacrificed their lives so that we could have the freedoms that we have to worship God and just all the many, many freedoms that we are so blessed with here in the United States. Yet, you know, it started kind of making me think, uh, what will I be remembered for? And, you know, we're young. We kind of think we're invincible and eh, who cares and no big deal and all that. I've got a long life to live, but as you get older and I'm in my early fifties, uh, you start to think about that. Uh, how will I be remembered? And, you know, I love the Bible. God's, I think it's God's life manual, very simply. Uh, the Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verses one and two, it says, there is a time for everything. A time to be born and a time to die. And, you know, uh, we like thinking about the being born part and the graduations and the weddings, but we don't like to think about that time to die part. And I've started to reflect and realize as, uh, you know, a lot of friends I've graduated high school, unfortunately, are not with us anymore. And uh, a lot of my friends' parents, uh, including my dad, are no longer with us. So it's one of the things we don't like to talk about. But the fact of the matter is, uh, I think that uh, I really want to encourage you and challenge you to think about how I'll be remembered. And I want to share three things with you that uh, I've been kind of ruminating on uh, since Memorial Day. Uh, the first one is uh, simply, what are you focusing your days on? What is your focus of your days? What what are you spending your your focus on each day? Uh, you know, Psalm chapter 90, verse 12 says, Teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are and help us to spend them as we should. And I know we talked in yesterday's program with Jen Collins about, you know, doing some self-reflection with God and asking him to see what it is asking him to show us what it is he wants us to do because there are a lot of good things out there and in fact uh i love the bible verse that says you know everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial and so so many times uh we get busy doing good things instead of god things and i don't mean that we need to be holier than thou and that we need to be like all have to be monks and not do anything but just totally um you know, live a life of solitude with God and, uh, think, and, and, you know, God may call you to that, but I know that's like less than 1% of people, uh, to be monks and nuns and things like that. But, you know, the fact of the matter is that, uh, our days are few as Psalm ninety twelve says. And the good part is God wants us to help us, wants to help us in looking at what are good things and what are God things. And I'll have to tell you, I've never regretted any time I've went to a, church service or to a Bible study or a life group or a conference or a seminar or a retreat and fill my mind and my heart, uh, my soul with spending time with something that's God centered. And so I want to ask you what it is that maybe you need to take a few vacation days or take a weekend and say, Hey, you know, I'm going to spend time uh, doing something to fill my tank spiritually and I tell you, you will be blessed tenfold. I believe that with all my heart. If you set aside and prioritize some time with God, I, I know some friends uh, recently that uh, their church had something that was on a Friday night during the day, Saturday and Saturday night, and of course, church on Sunday. And they said, you know, honestly, we thought, yeah, we'll go to maybe one of them. So they went to Friday night and they were so blessed that, you know, they had some errands and things they need to do on Saturday. But they just said, you know what, uh, we're going to shorten that list and we're going to go back and spend some time at this uh, worship conference they were having with some teaching and some great music. And they were just so blessed by it. And in fact, uh, winded up, uh, that's how we had one of our guests, Kurt Vernon, on recently because they were so blessed by his teaching and he was one of the worship leaders. And I want to encourage you uh, to check out those programs that we did with Kurt Vernon a couple weeks ago. I know you'd really be blessed. You can find those at our website, Hope is Here dot today. That's Hope is Here dot today. I also want to encourage you to pick up a copy of his new album. Uh, you can find that on Spotify, uh, Kurt Vernon. It's Kurt with a C, uh, Kurt Vernon Music. So check that out. 
But the second question I want to ask you to ponder is, are you living for yourself and being me-centered or living for God and becoming Christ-centered? And, you know, unless Sunday mornings or if we're in a life group during the week, we really don't get asked about those things. So out of our 168 hours a week that all of us are given, we might spend three or four of those with God, um, some a little more, some even a little less, if we're honest. And yet, i got to ask you today, are you living for yourself and being me-centered or living for God and becoming Christ-centered? And for those of you that are parents and grandparents, what do your children and your grandchildren see? As the old saying goes, more is caught than taught. Think about that for a second. More is caught than taught. You know, the old saying, do not as I say, but <laughs> as I do. And, you know, you can say it differently too, obviously. Uh, You know, you don't do what you say you're going to do. You tell people, and yet the fact of the matter is, man, if your children, your grandchildren see that God is a power to you and worship and with your finances and serving and volunteering, they will model that. And you know what? They may kick and scream and complain about it the whole time as their kids, but I promise you when they become parents, all right, that they will start to model some of those things because more is caught than taught. And the fact of the matter is, I love that verse in John chapter 3, verse 30, when John the Baptist was asked, hey, who do we follow? Um, you know, Jesus, this guy, Jesus is doing all these miracles. And, you know, beforehand it was just you and we were following you. And God obviously was blessing your ministry. And I love the humility that John the Baptist had. He said in John chapter three, verse 30, Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. And I think for somebody listening today, that's, that's true for you, that Jesus needs to increase in your thoughts and your actions both with your time and your financial resources. But you must decrease. And, you know, that's not the world's way. It says you can have it now, have it your way, you can order it on Amazon, have it delivered to your house the next day, uh, a lot of times at no charge if you're a member of Prime. And, you know, those are all good things, and yet at the same time, um, I know I've been guilty of buying too many books. I see good books, and I get reading about half of them. I see another book that somebody recommends, and I'm like, man, I'd like to get that. And I was looking the other day, and I'm like, man, I, I cannot buy any more books this year until I finish the four or five that I've got started. And, you know, we there, there's just little things that sneak up on us like that, like buying books, which are good things. Most of them are uh, faith-centered that I buy, and um try to help me grow spiritually yet, you know, I'm, I'm spending time and resources on those that, and I'm not finishing them and not being a good steward. Third thing I want to ask you about is, are you living to create an earthly legacy, which is a short sighted goal, or are you being wiser with the use of your time and building a eternal legacy? And, you know, I'm a sports guy, you know, my two favorite things are Jesus and sports and yet, you, you could ask me, hey, who won the Super Bowl three years ago? I couldn't tell you. Who won the NCAA championship four years ago? I have no idea. Who won Miss America last year? I mean, these are things that are really big earthly goals, and they're nice things, and there's nothing wrong with them. Like I said, I love sports, and I know people work so hard. I love the great stories of both individual and team accomplishments. And yet the fact of the matter is, as my hero Wayne Smith says, and I repeat it probably about once every two months on this program, you know, I've done a lot of funerals, but I've never done one with a U-Haul behind the hearst. You can't take anything with you. (laughs) And, you know, I love Wayne's laugh. And, you know, we say it humorously, but it's just so true. And as a pastor that's done over 100 funerals now, um, you know, it's true. You don't take anything with you. I mean, as I've shared the story before about my dad when I talked to the funeral director there, and even though I'd done probably over 75 funerals by then, I'd never talked with the funeral director about what do you bring, and he said, uh, uh, you know, what's he want to be buried in, a suit? And I said, yes, yeah, so bring a shirt, tie, underwear, and socks. And I said, okay. 
Then I got ready to hang up. I thought, uh, hey, uh, what about shoes? He goes, uh, he doesn't need shoes. And I went, wow. You know, you don't even leave this earth with a pair of shoes. You know, Romans chapter 14, verses 10 and 12 says, remember, each of us will stand personally before the judgment seat of God. Yes, each of us will have to give a personal account to God. And I think those of you who have listened to me for uh, the year and a half now, which is just amazing, God has been so good to provide the financial resources to do this program now for a year and a half. And I want to thank each and every person that does that and that's given donations individually. And we have a few people that are monthly givers and just have been such a blessing to make this radio program and the podcast possible. But, you know, the fact of the matter, friends, is, as positive as I like to be, and this is to give you hope and encouragement, we do have to realize that we will have to give a personal account of our lives to God. And so there's two questions that I know that God, I believe, when I say I know, I believe with all my heart, so I can't say that I know, but I believe that we're going to be asked when we die. Uh, the first one is, what did you do? God's going to ask us, what did you do with my son, Jesus Christ? John chapter 14, verse 6 says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, when Jesus said that, man, some of the, especially the religious leaders, they were like offended. Like, who does he think he is? And, and you know, I use this at, at every funeral I do at the end. And, you know, it makes people uncomfortable sometimes. But I just say, you know, hey, the fact of the matter is you're going to have to answer this question. With God, when you take your last breath, what did you do about my son, Jesus Christ? And I quote that verse, John chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to God except through me. And I say, you know, the fact of the matter is either Jesus was who he said he was or he, he was a lunatic. You know, he was a crazy man. And yet he's the only person I know that conquered death and over 2,000 years later has had millions of followers. Yet there are also millions more that have rejected him. But the fact of the matter is you got to answer that question. What did you do with your one and only life with Jesus Christ? The second thing that I think God will ask us, and I got this question from Rick Warren, uh, one of my mentors, not personally, but from a distance through many of his books and listen to many of his sermons over the years. And he says this is a question he thinks that God's going to ask us. He's going to say, hey, what did you do with what I gave you? And, you know, that's one of the reasons I do this program, and I don't mind asking for donations. I believe God's called me to give my time and use the gift of encouragement he's given me to help encourage and give others hope so we can stop this John 10.10 10, where Jesus warned us that the thief comes to steal and to kill and destroy. But I have come so that you may have life and have it abundantly. And I believe that that's what Jesus um, wants all of us to do. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, We were all created, we are all God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Jesus modeled this also in Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, when he said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. And last but not least, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And friends, as we follow Jesus and we get closer to him, people will be able to see these fruits of the Spirit in our lives. I close today just asking you, you know, I want to challenge you to write down three things that you'd like to be remembered for. Just three things. What would you like to be remembered for when you take your last breath? And what would you want said at your funeral? No, it's not warm and fuzzy, but you know what? We all are going to have to answer those questions, and it's better to think about them now until when it's too late. So I want to challenge you today to think about how do you want to be remembered? My name is Greg Horn, and this is Hope Is Here.